Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be ranking the Harry Potter books from worst to best or least favourite to favourite because of course it is clear that there are like no bad Harry Potter books but we all have our favourites and our least favourites so in this video I'm going to be ranking them from number 7 all the way to number 1, my all time favourite Harry Potter book. Um, I just want to say that there are going to be some spoilers in this video so if you haven't read the books yet go and read them out please and then I will see you back <laughs> once you finish them um, but without further ado let's get into the video so on uh, number seven aka my least favorite Harry Potter book it is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and I've seen many videos actually about people ranking the Harry Potter books and it seems that Chamber of Secrets is just basically everyone's least favorite don't get me wrong I still absolutely love this book to death but I don't know it just was never my favorite book the plot just wasn't as gripping as all of the other ones it's just not my favorite Harry Potter book I do really love Lockhart actually even though he's so freaking full of himself but the way he's written is just so brilliant and I really really enjoy reading all about Lockhart but just as for the rest of the book it is really not my favorite and I don't really have like a very strong opinion for the statement but it's just every time I read it it just didn't give me all the feels that all the other books gave me. So yes, um, let's just go on to number six. Number six is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and of course it all started with this book. It introduced us to this magical, magical world and it actually used to be one of my favourite books. Um, but the more I reread the series, the more I just saw this one as a wonderful introduction but not as one of my favourites. Um, Oh my god, I love this book so so much. The way she introduced all of the characters, especially Hagrid. I just love Hagrid so freaking much. And just how the trio became the trio. Um, this book is just so full of magic. Even though it is so short, it still introduces the entire world perfectly. And I love it that there are already details in this book that you read about um, in later books. And this is just one of those perfect starts to a series and I just cannot be more thankful for this book. And one of my favourite parts of this book is actually when they have to do all of the tasks in order to get to the stone um, and how every one of the trio is involved because everyone kind of uses their strengths for that particular task and I'm still really sad that they didn't include the potions task in the film because I would have loved to see that in the film um, but it's still so wonderful to read about this and just oh, I love this book so much and I think I've reread this one the most Definitely actually. I think I must have read this over 10 times now because it's such a short read and if you just feel like reading Harry Potter um, Just for the day you can basically read this in a day So that's why it's just one of those perfect books. My number five is actually also number five in the series It is Order of the Phoenix and oh my god angry Harry It's so funny to see how all of the characters are growing up and how they're all going through puberty Especially Harry like he's so angry in his book I absolutely loved reading about the Order of the Phoenix and all of the members of the Order of the Phoenix but I did find this book to be quite slow at times. It is like the biggest one out of the seven. It is massive. And there were some parts that I was just like, mm, okay, this is a bit slow for my liking. Um, but still, this is such a perfect, perfect book. It's funny because some time ago, this actually used to be um, my least favorite book, but I've reread it a couple of times since then. But then I've just grown to love it so much more because everyone is growing up and it's about love and friendship and just... It's so thrilling and exciting as well when they're going to the Department of Mysteries and i grown to love this book so much more <laughs> compared to like the first time I read it. Um, so that's quite cool, but still it's on my top five spot, which is still great and I love all the books. And of course this book made us laugh and cry and we met one of our favorite characters, Luna. Oh, I love Luna so much. She really has like a special place in my heart and oh. I really, really love this book. And my number four spot is actually also number four in the book series. It is Goblet of Fire and this book is so freaking amazing. Um, in my opinion it kind of feels different than the rest of the books because it's about like the competition and it's not that much about like a school year at Hogwarts and that's what I really, really love about it because all of the elements of the competition are just so thrilling and exciting and I particularly love um, the chapter, the, what was it called? The unexpected task where they have to find like a date for the U ball and that was just so hilarious. I love the fact that this book is so action packed and that's just one of the main reasons I love it so much and I really, like when you're reading it, you're really enjoying it so, so much. Um, so yes, that's why this one is on my number four spot and I absolutely love it. I really enjoy reading about all of the other wizards and witches as well that are not from Hogwarts so it really expands the universe and you can actually sort of realize how big the universe is 
um, because it's of course just over the entire world and the witches are wizards everywhere um, but now it really feels a bit more real and that's just so wonderful about this book so yes this one is definitely again one of my favorites and then we're down to my top three and number three I have Deathly Hollows and this one is such an amazing conclusion to the series it always feels so real like you're really there and of course with all the other books it feels like that as well but I don't know why every time I read this one it just feels like I'm in the Vessel of Hogwarts and like I'm just amongst all of them fighting Voldemort and the Death Eaters and oh I really 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 love this book and I remember the first time I read this I was just like oh my god this is my favorite book um but now it's on it's like number three which is still super super high this book actually has one of my favorite chapters the princess till and I'm sure that it's so many people's favorite chapter of the entire series it is just where everything comes together all the puzzle pieces fall into place and oh so so amazing so well written and just getting to know everything and I just always cry at that chapter like so much because it's just so beautiful. I also really love that this book does not only take place at Hogwarts because we've had six books um, at Hogwarts so it's really cool to just sort of travel with the trio um, finding all of the Horcruxes and yes that's also just a thing that I really really love about this book. That's basically I love everything about all of the books. There are just some things that I love a bit more, um, which is the traveling aspect of this book. So yes, oh man, I can't wait to reread this. Sometimes I just reread Deathly Hollows uh, without reading all of the rest of the series because I don't know, I just love reading concluding books and I think that this one is such an amazing conclusion and the epilogue just, oh my God. Every time I'm like reading the epilogue, I'm listening to Leaving Hogwarts, that soundtrack, um, because it just is the same as in the film and I can always sort of see it happening in my head with the music and then I always want to read the last bit of the book like the all was well during the last bit of the of the song so I always try to like read a bit slower if I can hear the song coming to an end but I'm already reaching the end so it's just like ugh, I'm so weird um, but yeah that's what I like to do <laughs> when reading the epilogue of this book and then my number two spot is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince and there are actually quite some mixed opinions about Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince but personally I really 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 love this book so much um, because again they're, they're like growing up and it's about love and friendship and Harry on Felix Felicis is just like the best thing ever as well as in the movies it's just so funny and oh my god I wish he'd been on Felix Felicis more often because it was just so hilarious and I just love the fact that again they're like they're growing up and it's really about all these young adults and their love and friendship which I just absolutely love. I also thought it was so interesting reading about Voldemort's past and how it all um, came together in the end with all the little puzzle pieces basically and I just really enjoyed reading about that because it gave so much backstory about Voldemort and the Horcruxes and I also really enjoyed reading about Slughorn because he's actually such an important character in the entire series um, because of his memories and then of course the sad sad end when Dumbledore died um, and the last chapter about the white tomb and his funeral and that's just such a beautiful chapter and I'm really sad that it didn't really include that in the film as well but it's such an amazing chapter and oh I love this book so much and I don't really understand why so many people don't really love it but I just personally love it so freaking much because in this book it just really feels like Harry, Ron and Hermione can just be like your friends in real life they feel so normal and that's just what I really really love about this book because you can sort of relate to them in a way and that's just so wonderful and then my all-time favorite Harry Potter book as of right now because my favorites tend to change quite a lot every time I reread them but this one has always been like my top spot for the last couple of years and it is Prisoner of Azkaban um funnily enough the film is actually one of my least favorite films which is strange but the book is just ugh love it so freaking much. This is like the first story where um, Harry, Ron and Hermione sort of are growing up because in the first two they were just so cute and tiny and young and here it really feels like they're growing up and I love reading about sort of the grown-up versions of them um, and here is really the beginning of them growing up and the thing that I also love about this book, oh my god I love everything about this book, but I really love the fact that it's not um, particularly about Voldemort in this one but about Sirius and how Harry eventually finds out that Sirius is actually his stepfather and it feels just so wonderful um, to read about Harry finally getting to know a part of his family and it just makes you so happy and you, you feel just all the love basically and in this book we also get to meet one of my favorite characters which is Remus Lupin I love Lupin so bloody much oh my god I just wish he could be my teacher in high school or university he is just such a brilliant mind and I just love him so much 
And I think that this book just really has it all. It has the friendship, the love, the time travel, which I still don't really understand that well. I just think I'm overthinking the time travel so much, but I just hate the fact that I've read so many articles, I've seen so many videos, and still I sort of can't get my head around the time turner and the time travel in this book. And then as well as reading like Cursed Child, it just doesn't make any sense to me anymore. And I really hate that. But if you can describe the time travel aspect of the time turner in like three sentences, that would be amazing. Uh, but it's just really annoying. I've read so many articles about time travel and still it doesn't make too much sense in my head. But nonetheless, I still absolutely love this book and the time travel aspect of it. As I said before, this book just has it all, like the love, the friendship, the time travel, the action, the good and evil, and that's why this one is definitely on my top spot and it has been for so many years because this is just, in my opinion, one of the most well-written Harry Potter books there is. And oh, this one will always have a special place in my heart, especially this copy. Um, because it is signed, let me see, by Daniel Radcliffe, aka Harry Potter himself. I got this one signed in London a couple of years ago and it was just one of the best days of my life, meeting Daniel Radcliffe. Um, so yes, this one, and especially this copy, will always have a very, very special place in my heart. Okay guys, so this was my ranking for the Harry Potter books from my all-time favourite other way around, my least favourite to my all-time favourite. Um, please let me know in the comments what your favourite Harry Potter book is and your least favourite. I'm actually quite interested um, in hearing that and I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos and if you have any video requests also please let me know in the comments because it's a new year but I don't have too many videos at so just let me know um, and I hope you all have a very very lovely day and I'll see you next time.